History is full of instances where mass shooters have made the news and struck fear in people. Most of these incidents are only one-day events, single locations, often with multiple victims. However, in this case, the two killers crossed the country, randomly shooting people as the opportunities presented themselves. It was during the month of October 2002 when a series of shootings rocked the Northern Virginia, Southern Maryland, and Washington, D.C. metro area. What was most disturbing was the wide area covered during the crime spree and the apparent random nature of the shootings. There did not seem to be a common denominator linking the victims together, but there was a prior history and a diabolical motive that led to these events. Who were John Allen Mohammed and Lee Boyd Malibu? How far did their rampage extend? How did they shoot so many people and evade capture for so long? What was their motive? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, military veteran, historian, author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten History. People all over the United States would become acquainted with the names of John Allen Muhammad and Lee Boyd Malbo as a result of their arrest in a shooting spree that made international headlines. But most people who follow these events did not know that their murderous activity started much earlier that year, information that came out later after they were arrested and charged for killing 10 people and wounding three in the Washington, D.C. area. John Allen Muhammad was born John Allen Williams on December 31, 1960 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. In August 1978, Muhammad enlisted in the Louisiana Army National Guard as a combat engineer and transferred to the regular Army on November 6, 1985 and was trained as a mechanic, truck driver, and a specialist metal worker. He changed his surname in 2001, long after joining the Nation of Islam in 1987, and was a follower of the racist anti-Semite Louis Farrakhan, providing security during the Million Man March that was actually nothing of the kind. His father and mother were Ernest and Ava Williams, and the family moved to New Orleans when his mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. She died when he was only three years old and his father abandoned the family, leaving John to be raised by his maternal grandfather and an aunt. Muhammad had served in the army, was divorced twice, and his second ex-wife, Mildred Muhammad, was granted a restraining order, alleging abuse. Muhammad was arrested on federal charges of violating a restraining order by possessing a weapon. They had been married and had three children, and he lost custody in a divorce. In 1999, he kidnapped his children and took them to Antigua, but he was wanted on credit card and immigration documentation fraud. It was during this time that he became close with Lee Boyd Malvo, a Jamaican child who later acted as his partner in the killings. Lee Boyd Malvo also went by the name John Lee Malvo, and he had lived with Muhammad in his duplex in Tacoma, Washington, for about a year prior to the start of the shootings. The first killing was February 16, 2002, when Kenya Cook, 21, was shot in East Tacoma, Washington. Her aunt was a friend of Muhammad's ex-wife, shot by Malbo. After his arrest, Malbo confessed to the murder, stating that Muhammad told him to do it. In 2004, Washington State decided not to press charges against Malbo because Cook's killing, quote, did not include the aggravating factors, end quote, that would lead to sentencing beyond that already imposed in Virginia. The next killing was on March 19, 2002, when 60-year-old Jerry Taylor was killed on a golf course in Tucson, Arizona. Mavo confessed to the murder Tucson police in October 2006 and was given immunity from prosecution. On August 1, 2002, in Hammond, Louisiana, Mavo shot 58-year-old John Gaeta in the neck with a 22 caliber revolver. Gaeta was badly wounded, but survived. Ironically, he received a letter of apology from Malvo in 2010. On September 5, 2002, Malvo shot Paul Arufa five times outside his restaurant in Clinton, Maryland. 
LaRufa miraculously survived, and he testified in the Virginia trial, supporting Muhammad's resentencing to life with the possibility of parole. On September 14, 2002, 22-year-old repender Benny Oberoi was shot and wounded outside the Hillendale Beer and Wine Store in Silver Spring, Maryland. To quote the CNN report, the shooting is linked by circumstances, witnesses, and location of the alleged snipers, but not by ballistics. The following month, in November 2002, Montgomery County Police Captain Nancy Demi stated that they had officially linked Abori's shooting to the other sniper shootings. On September 15, 2002, Mohammed Rashid was shot at a Brandywine Maryland liquor store and survived. Rashid, who had a clear view of his shooter, later testified and identified Malvo as the shooter in court. Then on September 21, 2002, 41-year-old Milligan Voldemarian was shot three times outside a liquor store in Atlanta and died of his wounds. Ballistics matched the 22 caliber handgun to both the Atlanta and the Montgomery County, Maryland shootings. No charges were ever brought by Georgia. On September 21, 2002, liquor store owner Claudine Parker was killed and clerk Kelly Adams seriously wounded in Montgomery, Alabama. The ballistics matched the Bushmaster 223 connected to later shootings and the various eyewitnesses also connected Muhammad and Malvo to the crime. Capital murder charges were filed against both Muhammad and Malvo after police in Montgomery, Alabama confirmed that fingerprints recovered matched Malvo's U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service card. However, due to the charges pending in Virginia and the fact there was a death sentence requested, Alabama also decided not to prosecute Muhammad or Malvo. On September 23, 2002, Muhammad and Malvo killed 45-year-old Hong M. Ballinger outside a beauty shop in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Both were charged with capital murder and armed robbery on October 31st after the ballistics examination matched the same Bushmaster 223 rifle. Louisiana also declined to prosecute Muhammad or Malvo due to the trial pending in Virginia. Three days later, on September 26, 2002, Wright Williams Jr. was shot and wounded at his grocery store in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Muhammad and Malvo were not charged for his shooting either due to the charges they were already facing, but the incident is later used to prove similar circumstances in Muhammad's trial. Muhammad and Malvo returned to the D.C. area and on October 2, 2002, one of the two fired a shot through a window at Michael's Craft Store in Aspen Hill, Maryland, but no one was injured. Later that same day, 55-year-old James D. Martin, a program analyst for the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, was killed in the parking lot of Shoppers Food Warehouse in Wheaton, Maryland. Then the next day, on October 3, 2002, 39-year-old landscaper James L. Buchanan was killed while mowing a lawn at a business near Rockville, Maryland. Then on the same day, cab driver, 54-year-old Prim Kamir Wallachar, was killed at a gas station in the Aspen Hill area of Montgomery County, Maryland. Then again, on the same day, 34-year-old Sarah Ramos of Silver Spring, Maryland, was killed at the post office near the Leisure World Shopping Center. A witness reported seeing a white van or truck leave the parking lot after the shooting, which directed police to a wrong vehicle. Also on October 3, 2002, 25-year-old Lori Ann Lewis Rivera of Silver Spring was killed at a Shell gas station in Kensington. Then again, on the same day, 72-year-old Pascal Charlotte was shot in the chest walking along Georgia Avenue. An hour later, he died in the hospital. Mohammed and Malvo took a break for the rest of the day. October 4, 2002 saw the two shooters camped in a Michaels parking lot in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where they shot 43-year-old Caroline Sewell as she placed her bags inside her Toyota minivan. She survived and was released from a hospital in Fairfax, Virginia on October 14th. Then, on October 7, 2002, 13-year-old Ian Brown was shot in the chest and outside his school, Benjamin Tasker Middle School in Bowie, Maryland. He survived and later testified at Muhammad's trial. Two days later, on October 9, 2002, a tarot death card was discovered near the scene of the shooting at the school with the message, 
call me God written upon it. That same day, not long after the tarot card was found, 53-year-old Dean Harold Myers of Gaithersburg, Maryland, was killed at a gas station in Manassas, Virginia. Witnesses again described a white minivan being in the area, which was stopped by police, but the driver and the vehicle were cleared of any suspicion. On October 11, 2002, 53-year-old Kenneth Bridges from Philadelphia was killed at an Exxon station just off I-95 near Fredericksburg, Virginia. Due to more witnesses seeing a white van with a ladder rack on the roof, the police created a huge roadblock trying to find a Chevy Astro type of vehicle. October 14, 2002, 47-year-old Linda Franklin of Arlington, Virginia was killed in a Home Depot parking lot in Falls Church, Virginia. On October 19, 2002, 37-year-old Jeffrey Hopper was shot in the parking lot of a Ponderosa Steakhouse near I-95 in Ashland, Virginia. Hopper survived and doctors removed the bullet on October 21st. Ballistics confirmed it was the same weapon used in the shootings. After nearly a week of laying low, Muhammad and Malbo were back at work, and on October 22, 2002, Bus driver 35-year-old Conrad Johnson of Oxon Hill, Maryland, was shot when he reached the top step inside his commuter bus in Aspen Hill, Maryland, and he died in hospital in Bethesda. Finally, on October 24, 2002, John Allen Muhammad and Lee Boyd Mabo were found sleeping in Muhammad's blue 1990 Chevy Caprice at a rest stop in Frederick County, Maryland, and arrested. He had purchased the former police car in New Jersey on September 11, 2002. Muhammad admitted to police that he admired Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda and that he had approved of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. Mabo told police that Muhammad planned on making money and establishing a terrorist training camp in Canada for children. It appeared that all of the killings were a ruse to deflect from Muhammad's real ambition, eventually killing Mildred, his ex-wife, to get custody of his three children. Prosecutors said the shootings were part of a plot to extort $10 million from local and state governments. According to the Seattle Times, quote, the prosecution called more than 130 witnesses and introduced more than 400 pieces of evidence intended to prove that Muhammad undertook the murders and ordered Malibu to help carry it out, end quote. Evidence included a rifle found in Muhammad's car that was linked by ballistics tests to eight of the ten killings in the Washington area and two others in Louisiana and Alabama. The car, which was modified, said that a sniper could shoot from inside the trunk and a laptop computer were also found in the car that contained maps with icons pinpointing shooting scenes. Witness accounts put Muhammad across the street from one shooting and his car near the scene of several others. There was also a recorded phone call to a police hotline in which a man, his voice identified by a detective as Muhammad's, demanded money in exchange for stopping the shootings. Don't say anything, but where are the people that are causing the killing in your area? Both were arraigned and Malvo was charged as an adult. John Allen Muhammad and Lee Boyd Malvo were both convicted and Muhammad received a death sentence. During his own trial, Malbo said he lied when he claimed to be the shooter in all cases in order to save Muhammad from the death penalty as he believed that he would not face the death penalty being a minor. In two days of testimony, Malbo outlined detailed aspects of all the shootings, but he was convicted and received several life sentences without parole in both Maryland and Virginia. Under Virginia law, at that time, a defendant convicted of capital murder was allowed to choose the method by which he or she will be put to death, either lethal injection or electrocution. As Muhammad declined to select a method, by law, the method of lethal injection was selected for him. He was offered a selection of a last meal, which he accepted. Muhammad's last meal consisted of chicken, red sauce, and cake. Muhammad was executed on November 10, 2009. But Malvo's story would continue, and on May 26, 2017, a federal judge overturned two of Malvo's life sentences in Virginia, but his other Virginia convictions remained, as well as his previous life sentences from Maryland. On June 21, 2018, a federal appeals court ruled that Malvo's four life sentences without parole in Virginia were to be vacated. This was based on the 2012 Supreme Court decision citing the Eighth Amendment that it was unconstitutional for juveniles to receive mandatory life sentences 
without the possibility of parole. The state of Virginia appealed the decision. On March 18, 2019, the state Supreme Court took up Malvo's case in Virginia, and in February 2020, Malvo's sentences of life without parole in Virginia were commuted to life with the possibility of parole after the state changed the law concerning juveniles being given such sentences. But Malvo was less fortunate where his sentence of life without parole in Maryland was not reversed. As a result, Malvo was eligible for parole in 2022, but he was denied parole. However, after filing another appeal on August 26, 2022, a Maryland appeals court ruled that Malvo must be resentenced and on August 30th, 2022, the Virginia Parole Board denied him parole. Malvo is currently in the Red Onion State Prison in Virginia where he is serving his life sentences and the judge noted that it may be an academic question in Mr. Malvo's case because he would first have to be granted parole in Virginia before his consecutive life sentences in Maryland even began. Mohammed's motive for mass murder was to cover up the eventual murder of an ex-wife in order to gain custody of his children, while dragging a juvenile along for the ride, and also to take the fall if anything went wrong. Yes, there are monsters among us. Thanks for watching today's episode of Forgotten History. If you like this episode, please consider becoming a channel member or joining our Patreon page. This would help us offset the ever-increasing cost of production. As always, please like, share, and comment. And if you have any show ideas, please contact us, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time.